This is Economy Watch. What you need to know about New Zealand's economic life today. Brought to you by interest.co.nz. Kia ora and welcome to Thursday's Economy Watch where we follow the economic events and trends that affect New Zealand. I'm David Chaston and this is the international edition from interest.co.nz and today we leave with news that is all about American inflation and the consequences of missing expectations. The American annual inflation rate picked up slightly for a second straight month to 3.5% in March, its highest rate in six months and well above the 3.2% rate in February and also higher than analyst forecasts of a 3.4% rate. Of some concern is that the month-on-month rate stayed up at 0.4% and almost a 5% annualised level. Their core rate, that's without food and energy, however, stayed down to 3.8% and unchanged, but the dip was expected here. All up, this shows American inflation is far from beaten. Perhaps the Fed was expecting this because the minutes of its March meeting released today shows them wanting to see progress on the inflation front before they reduce their 5.25% policy rate. They are clearly not there yet, as they suspected. The US dollar rose sharply on the news, as did benchmark bond yields. The S&P 500 fell as rate cut hopes for 2024 fade. It may be all about the inflation miss today, but there were other indicators out as well. US mortgage applications were barely changed last week from the week prior, holding low to be 23% lower than year-ago levels. No rebound in the American housing markets. Their benchmark fixed 30-year home loan rate moved back up over 7% plus points, a one-month high. And there was a rise in American wholesale inventories in February, but to be fair, these overall levels in relation to sales activity are entirely normal from a historic perspective. As expected, the Bank of Canada left its policy rate unchanged at 5% in its overnight review. It says its confident inflation trend is easing there. And Japanese producer prices rose 0.8% in the year to March, in line with forecasts and marginally higher than in February. And Taiwanese exports surged in March, more than making up for February's hesitation. In fact, they delivered their best month since July 2022 and their second best March month ever. In the South Korean parliamentary elections, the Conservative Alliance is suffering a big defeat, with the Democratic Party Alliance heading for a parliamentary majority there. In China, ratings agency Fitch has affirmed their sovereign credit rating of A+, but has shifted its outlook from stable to negative. It cited the growing risks of China's public finance situation as fiscal buffers have eroded, especially from overstretched local government financing vehicles, while Beijing deals with its stuttering property development sector. And staying in China, vehicle sales rose a very impressive 9.9% in March from year-ago levels to almost 2.7 million units in the month, following a 19.9% slump the month before. Consumption recovered following the Lunar New Year holidays and many car makers slashed prices, which has been effective from a sales perspective. China's EV exports, especially to Europe, continue apace, but there are growing questions about whether these shipments will find buyers. The flood to Europe is overwhelming local manufacturers and they're not happy. The US Treasury 10-year yield is now at 4.56% and up a sharp 19 basis points from yesterday on the US CPI result. And the price of gold will start today lower by $13 at $2,335 an ounce and off its all-time high. And oil prices have risen a dollar to just on $85.50 a barrel in the US while the international Brent price is up a bit less to $89.50 a barrel. And the Kiwi dollar starts today at just under 59.8 US cents and down three quarters of a cent from yesterday, all on the US dollar moves. Against the Aussie, we're a half a cent firmer at 91.9 Australian cents. Against the Euro, we're little change to 55.6 Euro cents. That all means our trade weight index starts today at just on 69.3 and down 20 basis points. And the Bitcoin price starts today firmer at $69,348 and up almost 1% from this time yesterday. Volatility of the past 24 hours has been modest though, at just on plus or minus 1.8%. You can find links to the articles mentioned today in our show notes, and you can get more news affecting the economy in New Zealand from interest.co.nz. Kia ora, I'm David Chaston, and we'll do this again tomorrow. Tomorrow.